Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon. It is the Earth Master back here on this Wednesday. Got Friday right around the corner again, seems like. Uh, June 28th, 2023. It's about 11.33 a.m. here along the West Coast. Latest activity looks like a 1.7 up into the region of Alaska. Now, we did see uh, a little bit of movement, uh, adjustment off the coast here of Japan following some deeper activity yesterday we did see the super deep 5.8 442 kilometers deep there was some adjustment upstream much closer uh to the japan trench here just off the east coast here of japan uh, this earthquake coming in within the last couple hours very shallow 4.5 so keeping an eye on this area potentially for some larger scale movement uh, down here across the uh, new zealand area back and forth here with the earthquake activity it just uh, seems to be the scenario lately not a whole lot of movement there within the new zealand area yet but i think uh, it's getting closer still got to watch it uh, we did see a most recent quake here near the auckland islands early this morning about four o'clock or so along the plate boundary still expecting some movement though across this uh, plate boundary bend let's check out the uh, geonet servers here real quick stand by for a second and we'll pull these up there we go Let's see what we got there's a 3.6 down south island new zealand area looks like about six hours or so ago that would be roughly around the time when the uh 4.5 struck so let me see what we got here for the earthquake drums Let's see if we can spot those earthquakes down south here so yeah it looks like uh two earthquakes of course the four pointer down in the auckland islands uh, is going to be the uh, first one that followed up by some subsequent movement much closer but up along the plate boundary remember that uh, that 4.6 occurred well or 4.5 excuse me occurred well south here of the south island but it did pick up pretty nicely uh, looks as though may have seen a, a little small series of earthquakes there. Uh, but either way, definitely seen a little bit of height and movement here across the uh, the plate boundary there, across the Alpine Fault, it looks like, in the South Island, New Zealand area. So just keep an eye on it. Um, definitely been bouncing back and forth in terms of movement up north and south and also across the... Uh, this little plate boundary here is where uh, we've seen a lot of activity as well. Uh, with New Zealand out here in the middle, just kind of waiting. All right, up around the Tonga area, the latest one shows uh, some further deep movement here. 5.4, 113 kilometers deep into the Tonga Trench. We'll continue to watch this area uh, for some movement. Across the Indonesia area, uh, latest quake, well, from yesterday. As far as the Earthquake 3D globe goes, still having some issues accessing the EMSC data. I'm not for sure what's going on here, but I don't know if they know their servers are down or if there's maybe a new server address that needs to be updated here across the Earthquake 3D globe. But for now, keeping up the USGS uh, earthquake activity here. So we're lacking the smaller quakes across, you know, depending on where you're looking at here. Um, you know, missing a lot of the smaller earthquakes on the globe, at least as far as in internationally goes. Uh, so we'll continue to watch uh, and see if they update the servers on that. All right, let's see what else we got uh, across the rest of the world. Did have some activity yesterday. Well, last night, uh, 4.8 into the South Sandwich Islands area. One earthquake up here. Look at this underneath Bolivia. That is a super deep one. Just about as deep as they get here into this area. 532 kilometers deep. Now, I know we had a, a pretty deep earthquake around this area um in the past couple days i believe oh this other one 4.7 uh, underneath bolivia that was 249 kilometers deep and also uh underneath july or uh i was gonna say july <laughs> what did i say july argentina area 228 kilometers deep as well a couple days ago so increasing deeper movement activity here into the peru chile trench could be indicative of some larger scale movement about ready to take place upstream. So we'll keep an eye on that area as well. Into the Puerto Rico region, a handful of smaller quakes, nothing big going on. A couple twos and threes. 
across the states looking uh, at a low activity outside of Pecos, Texas and one earthquake way up north here outside of Snyder, Texas. Now I know what's up there. There's quite a bit of these. Uh, let's see here if it's out there in these fields. Look at that. You can even see it before I even pull it up here. You can kind of see the shaded uh, light color. But once upon when you're zooming in, goodness, that is one heck of an oil field. Look at that. Woo. That's about as crazy as it gets. You guys see all that? A lot of oil fields out here around Snyder, Texas. Been through there uh, at least close there when I'm out storm chasing uh, numerous times. But this looks like a hot spot of oil activity. There's <laughs> a lot. Anyway, a 3.3 occurring within this oil field here, which is common, which commonly happens. All right, uh, Oklahoma, Texas, little, or uh, Oklahoma up north, a little bit of smaller earthquake activity, nothing big. Uh, throughout Yellowstone, let's go ahead and give a uh, quick glance here at the Yellowstone overview and see what we have to report. Uh, not a whole lot. There's a... Uh, that's going to be a thunderstorm activity from yesterday. We'll watch this pop up again. I believe they're still going to have thunderstorm activity up there um, that will give that environmental noise. It's just been all too common. Uh, but far as earthquake activity goes, there's not a whole lot popping up here today, folks. Things look pretty mellow and quiet as they have been at Yellowstone National Park. Uh, up here into the Washington area, Pacific Northwest, a little bit of movement outside the Yakima region of Washington. This area did see some swarming. I believe it's been over 30 days now. Yeah, this area did see a little bit of swarming here uh, last month or so. Uh, just a little bit of activity here. There's some fault systems that do run on the eastern side of the Cascades. Uh, what do we got up here at Mount uh, Hood? We got one lonesome earthquake on the south flank there. Let's go ahead and double check that. Uh, let me back out here and go to the uh, trimmer map. I think I forgot to check the trimmer last night. We did. So we got 52 epicenters of trimmer, by the way, from yesterday. Uh, that's under the Oregon area down in the southern end of the Cascadia. So I do want to check out the uh, volcanic activity around Mount Hood. One lonesome earthquake down here on the south flank, it looks like. So we're going to check out uh, just a seismograph station here and see if we can pin or maybe not pinpoint it, but see if there's any other activity that uh, may not be reported here. Give it a second. Give it a second. All right. Ah, this is a mess of a station here. Um, Let me see what we got. I am not for sure what all that racket and noise is here. It doesn't look like uh, earthquake activity. That may be that uh, specific station down there. It looks like some heavy equipment or something going on down there. We'll check out uh, this other six component broadband station around Mount Hood Meadows. See how this one looks. <clears throat> this drop off here in the data, that's kind of odd. This is very squashed in terms of uh, viewing anything. And of course that one's not working. So. Now you got me wondering what's going on here. Let's check out. <laughs> Didn't want to check out all these, but kind of hard to find a, a good station that may be working. Lambertson Butte. All right. Let's see. This one looks pretty good. There's that little earthquake right here. It looks like that's going to be that little spike. Some S waves from who knows where. It could have been from the, uh, when was that? Six, who knows what, uh, anything looks like some surface waves from distant earthquakes uh, but yeah this this seismograph station looks legit in terms of being able to view data appropriately and that's about the only earthquake that's shown up there and that's a 0 0.9 so that's very small uh, see if we got the previous update or our previous day there's some s waves possibly from the uh, Japan earthquake yesterday it looks like maybe another spike or two there at uh, Mount Hood but overall I wouldn't say any type of swarm any type of uh, activity at all just some very small microquake movement there across Mount Hood all right southern end of the Cascadia showing a little bit of movement following all that trimmer yesterday it looks like a 2.5 down here at the extreme southern end of the Cascadia about 17 kilometers deep northern California a little spotty activity across the Reno area as well nothing major yet Still seeing some movement going on across the Calaveras Fault Zone into the San Andreas Fault, the plate boundary. But uh, again, nothing big there yet. Just a couple small earthquakes. And Southern California still continues to be quiet. This is 
is very odd. Um, yes, there's been a handful of smaller microquakes, but 2.5 and above last seven days, that's uh, very minimal for Southern California there along a major plate boundary. All right, uh, the Alaska region up north to Alaska. A little bit of movement north of Anchorage, but nothing big going on. 2.5 map and above shows a couple, couple twos up there, which is expected. Major subduction zone sits there. Uh, aside from that, uh, let's see what we got here for Hawaii. A little bit of activity across the Pahala region, and looks like Kilauea Volcano. We got one earthquake here. Very shallow earthquake, 1.9, so... Let's see what we got for the uh, latest data here. It doesn't look like they put anything out yet. Well, that's the AVO, excuse me. Here's the HVO, Kilauea Volcano update. Still paused. Nothing new to report here, it looks like. Uh, currently no lava. I'll continue to watch this, of course, and see uh, see what picks up or maybe what doesn't pick up. Uh, let's see here. I wanted to check out the EMSC map. Uh, it looks like they've updated stuff here. Um, if you, uh, this looks a lot different far as their whole design goes. In fact, it is. That's probably why I'm not able to pick up the, the, um, data on the earthquake 3d globe yet is because they've changed their servers. Like when you go to feeds over here, there's numerous agencies that you can go through but I, I don't I choose not to put all these up here otherwise the earthquake 3d globe will be unreadable so I keep for the most part USGS here on the globe and I have been using the EMSC data world last 50 but as you can see there's no data coming in at all nothing zip zero so not for sure what's going on I think the earthquake 3d developer will probably have to um reintegrate the server or at least a new server for the earthquake 3d globe so i keep up the um i'd like to keep the one or the seven day uh, 1.0 magnitude up and then set it for the last 24 hours here and then i keep the adjustment around 2.5 for the magnitude sometimes you'll see some smaller quakes show up but for the most part um yeah that's going to be it but either way here's a new emsc model i it looks a little cluttered i mean i don't know kind of neat you have to look at the color scale up here one hour going to be the uh, purple colored magnitude scale up here so this is going to show just a lot of i'll have to look through this i mean this is kind of a uh, fault systems as well there we go that's kind of cool added the fault map up here Cascadia. Uh, either way, let's see here. Latest information on any quakes. I have to figure out how to migrate through this. It's a little bit different. Looks like a handful of smaller quakes there across Turkey area. Not seeing anything major brewing up. There's that 4.5 off the coast of Japan. But uh, we'll continue to... Uh, check back on that um, server and see if um, they update that or not. Got a little flaring coming in right now. It looks like peeking out here in the upper sea flare category. We did have a small M flare last night, but you can see the sea flare just peeking up here in the sea uh, flare class. That is coming from, let's see here. Well, I don't see anything, I not see anything light up right now. Let's see. That's, that's a little odd. Maybe down here. I don't know. Maybe up here as well. It's not, not a big flare. But um, we do have this fairly ginormous sunspot that's facing us. 3354. It's squarely lined up with the Earth's sun plane right now. And it still looks like a monster, uh, so to speak. It has been growing fairly rapidly over the past couple days. And that's the uh, area to watch for some flaring. And it's pointing right at us. So if anything major does blast off, it will be, no doubt, geo-effective. Uh, looks like 99% chance for a C-flare, M-flare at 40, X-flare around 10% chance, 
and uh, that sunspot again 3354 which harbors a beta gamma class magnetic structure 3354 this is the old one uh, not for sure why this hasn't been updated yet but uh, beta gamma class getting fairly complex um, yeah so we'll continue to watch this nothing brewing yet as far as any major aurora forecast goes but with this thing directly at us uh, all it would take is a huge CME uh, and that could uh, stir things up here in the coming days all right uh, storm prediction center what do we got here for the weather forecast for the afternoon slight chance for some severe weather across these areas in the yellow looks like a very minimal threat for tornado probabilities today with two percent around those areas of st paul uh, and the woodbury area of minnesota wind uh, maybe hell event looks to be the uh, main threat across portions of wyoming and scott's bluff nebraska where they've gotten a lot of rain recently and uh, a lot of storms so Thunderstorm outlook today. Good portion here of the uh, Intermountain West up into the Montana area. Lots of weather. Texas drying out li uh, slightly, but that's going to change. There's some uh, there's some forecast models here showing. Uh, it looks like towards the weekend, things going to start brewing back up here. Notice that storming activity kicking up. And these areas that are in a drought up here are going to get some more rain. So hopefully we can get these guys out of the drought conditions. But uh, yeah, look like a return of some storms. And there's that tropical development around the 4th or 5th. Still uncertain on what it's going to do. It's a ways out. But the models have been consistent with something stirring up down here around the 4th or 5th of July. Uh, entering into the Gulf. So we'll continue to watch that for any development. All right. Have a good day, folks. And uh, we'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later tonight. Unless something major happens. Take care and have a good day.